Okay, so this is my five inch touchscreen for Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, it's made by Big Tree Tech and full disclosure, they gave it to me to do a video. I've already done that video, uh, but I figured I'd do another video because uh, I really like it. And by the way, this is my fidget spinner phone. I've done a video on this already if you want to look through my channel. I watched a video by Everything Computers where he built a Raspberry Pi case and he bought one of these and I'll put a link in the description to this. Basically, it's, um, it's a load of standoffs and screws for a Raspberry Pi. So if you want to build things or stack things up, it's really, really handy and they're all the right size. So let's move that out of the way. So you can see the screen attaches to the Pi 4 uh, with screws. And if you look at my other video, it shows a bit more detail about that. So I've got four standoffs to give it a bit of distance between the screen. And then I've got the Pi and then I've got the longest standoff and then the shorter standoff to give me some distance to clear the USB and the Ethernet. I was looking in my loft, that's why I found the fidget spinner phone. I was looking for my clear case, which I showed in another video, which was a very cheap one, but I can't think where I put it. I've got so many cases, I've actually mislaid a couple of them. But I was gonna put that on the top. And then I found my super old case, my original case, which is this floppy disk, which already had the holes cut through it because I used it in that way before you can see that it leans back at quite a nice angle, so it's quite comfortable if you put it on a table and you use it with a wireless controller, uh, it, uh, it works very well. So the next bit I needed was this Easy Act device, uh, and this is a charger. Now you can see it's charged, uh, it's got the lights that come up to show you how much charge is in it. Uh, if I press this switch on, it actually turns on a Wi-Fi network. Now I don't need this for the Pi, uh, but basically uh, you can create a Wi-Fi network and it's got an SSID and so on on there uh, and it will connect multiple devices and you can transfer files. Now I actually used this years ago on holiday uh, and my kids uh, met some other kids that they didn't know but they all had uh, iPads and iPod touches and they all ended up playing Minecraft uh, not on the internet but using this as a server so it's been a, it's been a great little device. So now I just need it for power so let's turn off the Wi-Fi and I can plug USB into here. So I've got a USB-C cable. This would obviously be a lot better if I had a shorter USB-C cable, but I don't. So if I plug this in the top, or let's just plug a memory card in. And the memory card's interesting because I've got this memory card extender, which I've also done another video on, but because the ribbon cable blocks the memory card, I can put a memory card in here. And if I, first of all, I'll, I'll use this one, uh, which has got Raspberry Pi OS on it. Plug that in and you'll see, oh, I need to turn this on. This has got a button that you press and hold to switch on the power. And I didn't think this would work because it's not really enough power. What was it, five volt, 1.2 amp? Uh, and you need about three amps really for a Raspberry Pi 4. But this does seem to work absolutely fine. And this is working just completely from the battery, so I'm using nothing else. So if I tap on the touchscreen, you can see that everything comes up uh, and I can use it as a touchscreen device. But I'm not gonna do that because I've got the other memory stick, which you can see. So let's log out and shut down. That just shows that the touchscreen works. I showed that in another video, but I thought I'd uh, show it booting again. So that's powered off. Uh, if I press and hold this little button which turns off the power completely, there you go. So that's like unplugging it. These adapters are so much nicer for putting uh, SD cards into your Pi on, especially on my big rack adapter. I absolutely love it for that. Okay, so I've managed to get it booted up. It did take several tries. Uh, I think the charger maybe needs to be fully charged because it isn't really uh, supplying enough power to the device. But there are other battery devices on the market. So this is just a proof of concept to see if it works really. Okay, so the end goal really would be to get something like this booting up. Now that I know it can be booted up from uh, a battery power, there are official batteries that you could connect onto the back of the Pi. So it wouldn't actually be that big as a device. Um, so I'm thinking that might be something I might have a look at ordering uh, a battery pack that will go on here in place of the floppy disk really. But it's nice to have this that it stands up. But just to show you it working, uh, something like Game Boy Advance is obviously a very good thing to have on there because it's designed for a small screen. 
and it'd be nice to be able to get the controller to either one of these ones that clamps on either side uh, with maybe with an Xbox controller layout uh, or have it I think it's probably too heavy to have on top of a controller but if you're gripping it like this I think that would be the ideal situation so I'm going to keep looking at it uh, keep trying it and you can see that Game Boy Advance looks good on a five inch screen not all games look good on a small screen uh, and obviously it depends how close you hold it to your face so I think if I can get the controllers to go either side of the screen that will definitely be better so that and the batteries I would think would then become quite a usable proposition because the Pi has so many options for what you can do on it so I've just booted up Sega Rally on PSP uh, this is a tiny micro SD adapter with 128 gig card in it the reason I use this is it's incredibly low power uh, this works, it's the only USB device I could get to work with an iPhone uh, lightning adapter without external power. So I know it draws very, very little power. And I've got videos on this and I'll put a link in the description. But let's just do a quick bit of Sega Rally. And for sound, you would use Bluetooth audio. So whether that's Bluetooth headphones, so I've got AirPods, uh, or you could use a Bluetooth speaker. Here we go, so Sega Rally. You can see it looks brilliant on this little screen super playable so I'm going to continue with this and I'm going to I'm definitely going to get an extra battery pack uh, I'm going to see which ones <laughs> I'm doing this terribly I'm going to see which ones uh, are the best for what I need something that is designed for the Pi uh, that I can just screw onto the back uh, and also just research controllers and see what sort of thing I can find that maybe will go either side of the screen or just a way of getting the Xbox uh, wireless controller to work Anyway, I hope you like this. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.